Today we'll be adding our finishing touches in this exciting and colourful children's room that we are creating. So on this locker behind me we are going to create a wardrobe or a cupboard for this boys' room. We've already done a rainbow of beautiful chocolate colours on this locker. Next we'll be adding a new colour on this door and it's also a new colour to our chocolate range called Godfrey's Glimpse. Very important, lacquer thinners etches a surface, especially a smooth surface, so that the paint can grip onto that surface. We also recommend to use lacquer thinners on surfaces that has been varnished or oiled or that has received furniture polish to remove any greasiness or oiliness from that surface. Pour some thinners onto my mutton cloth and I wipe my surface clean. The preparation and cleaning part is the most important step when working with chocolate paint because you need to ensure that your surface is grease free, oil free and dust free. So I'm cleaning my doors properly and next I allow the thinners to dry for at least 20 minutes before I start with a paint application. I'm now going to use masking tape to make sure that I have perfect cut lines. So very important when applying masking tape, make sure that you don't do it on newly painted surfaces. The masking tape will rip the paint from your painted surface, so it's important to allow the paint to dry well. Now let the fun start. We are going to use our Godfrey's Glimpse colour and we are going to use a foam roller for our paint application. Seeing that the surface is small and flat, foam roller works best. I'm going to make use of a paint tray. It's just easier to work from, especially when you work with a foam roller. To avoid leaving lines and streaks on the surface, spread the paint evenly onto the foam roller. Something to remember when working with a foam roller. I can move in any direction to make sure I get even coverage on my surface. As you will see, air bubbles will appear on my surface. This is actually a very natural process that happens. Only important tip to bear in mind when this happens is to make sure that you work in a space where there's no breeze, as the air will unnaturally pop those air bubbles and then you will have a rough texture on your painted surface. Using a foam roller creates a smooth, even finish, but a very thin layer of paint. So wait 20 minutes for the first coat to dry and then apply a second one. There will be spaces and areas where the foam roller can't reach. So for this purpose we'll be using a paintbrush to just make sure that there's an even application of paint everywhere and in all the detail. I'm going to use Nate on the next drawer while my first coat is drying on the top one. It's a beautiful teal colour. It adds to the excitement of the colour inspiration in the space. So all the areas where I know my foam roller might not reach, I first do a coat of paint with my paintbrush. And I'll wait 20 minutes for this to dry before I start with my foam roller application. The colours Nadine is using only need two coats. Whites and light tones of red and yellow might need a third coat as the pigmentation in them isn't as strong. And then it also depends on the background colour you're working with. Say for instance you paint with a white colour on a black, black background more coats of paint might be required to cover the dark background completely. Once done painting and satisfied with what you've created, we can now remove the masking tape. Once the paint is dried, Nadine adds final touches to this toddler's newly decorated room. She also labels some areas with chalk to help five-year-old Roy learn to read 
and so that he can scribble as much as he likes. I am so excited about this space. This is color inspiration. It was uniquely designed to add creativity to a young person's life. So the vision behind it was to upcycle, recycle elements in this room. So the headboard is an old car door that we got from a scrapyard. It was rusted and looked terrible. We painted in the color true blue, sanded it a bit, added a stencil design to it to create a fun element to this room and also to bring all the colors that we've used in this room together. The toy organizer is an old fruit rack that we've also painted in different colors. There are ropes hanging in the corner of the room where he can climb and have fun especially in winter when it's cold outdoors. The metal dustbin in the room is the laundry bin as well. That was rusted, it was old, it looked horrible. We simply cleaned it with thinners like we've done on the locker. We've painted it in Jaco, which is a stunning green color, and in Shorty Story. Colors were used in this room, playful colors. So we used reds, real red. We used, used Simon Says, which is a yellow, brighter yellow. All the choco colors were designed to work well together. Depending on the theme of your room and the colors in your room, just select those colors that fit in your space and it will be a great success. So what I love most about this space is the playfulness and the fact that we've played around with different colors. I think there's a child hidden in each of us. This room can grow as Roy grows. Elements in this room can just have a new splash of paints in a different color on it, and it can easily be changed into a different look and feel. Say for instance, an industrial room. So this is a timeless room that we've enjoyed creating, and I can't wait to see how Roy grows up in this space. For stockist opportunities and workshop information, please email Nadine at chocopaint.co.za. Happy painting!